Hi guys and welcome back to another video where today we're going to be not predicting but actually reacting to our 2019-2020 predictions for the final league table of the championship season. Now we made um, these predictions back in I think it was August 2019, a very long time ago now but uh, the way it's going to work is if we get um, or if our prediction for a team where they finish in the table spot on you get five points if you get a team finishing one place above or below where we predicted then we get three points and a team finishing two points above or below where their final position was we just get the one point for that anything else you get zero points now looking back at last year nathan i had 27 points for that 2018-2019 campaign and you had 21 so let's see who ends up the winner for the 2019-2020 campaign very very tricky lead to predict of course no one ever gets high score predicted in the championship table usually. no that's right notoriously ever. difficult this one to predict Okay, so first up, I'm going to go for my relegation spots. In bottom of the table, I had Wigan. Now, unfortunately, they only finished one place out, and really, they shouldn't have because of the whole uh, points, deduction, points deduction fiasco. But, I mean, their owner's pathetic, quite frankly. Dave Whelan, former owner... Um, when he sold the club, put him in a fantastic place financially. New owners come in, completely ruin the finances for them, plunge them straight into administration. I think they finished about mid-table as well if uh, they hadn't have gone in there, but 12-point deduction put them into League One, so I had them bottom completely wrong there, but for the case of them getting uh, finishing 23rd um, with the points deduction added on, I, only, I get three points for that. 23rd, first disaster, uh, Reading. Now, I think most people put Reading in the relegation spots uh, this time around. They have been struggling in the championship for a few years now. And their marquee signing in the summer was Charlie Adam. Like, that, that's just a recipe for, for disaster at the time. But uh, the likes of George Puskas, um, Matey. Matey as well, scoring ridiculous loads of goals, um, completely turning them around. Chris Gunter, of course, bowing out of Reading after all these years as well. Yeah, I think he's been released today on a free, hasn't he? Got released today on a free, come to Cardiff or come back. I don't think so. Well, depends really. No. Cover. Um, but... But yeah, one completely wrong there. And another I got completely wrong uh, was QPR. Now, been struggling for a few years. Can't seem to string anything together. Had the transfer embargo a few years back as well. But really haven't recovered since then. Just been above relegation for the last few years. But I thought this would finally be the year they went down. Um, didn't sign a few too many notable names. But they finished, well, they finished mid-table at 13th. Um, as a ridiculous player especially so at uh, the bottom three only three points that out of a possible 15 right let's get on to the disaster which is my bottom oh, three it's even worse Reading I predicted them to go down prior to the season it looked um, yeah like they haven't signed many but in fact they did bring a, quite a few players in and I actually yeah had them to finish bottom they actually finished in the 14th position so a minus 10 swing there zero points next I had Millwall to finish in the bottom worst three one in, in the 21st video. yeah worst one in the entire video 15 places um, above where they actually finished so uh, yeah slap on the wrists for that one uh, yeah terrible. terrible I thought they were gonna have a bad season but uh, yeah they they did pretty well really uh, just finishing outside the playoff zone and finally I had Barnsley now Barnsley finished in 21st I predicted 22nd so I just get uh, one position below so uh, three points for me for Barnsley moving on for positions 21st up to 17th again I haven't had the best predictions and results on this one. Uh, in 21st, I went for Luton. Now, Luton actually finished uh, 19th in the end, so it was just two positions out there. They did, oh, I think it was that crazy final day of the season. Oh, they actually managed to escape yeah. from the relegation zone. It was, uh, as we thought, that, that final day was, uh, it was immense. Yeah, Luton, just uh, two positions out to a point there. QPR, as you've already said, Nathan, they finished mid-table 13th. I had them down as 20th position, seven places above where I thought they'd uh, end up. So a, zero, a big fat zero big there. Fat. Zero. We're gonna athletic it. We know about you know going into administration, so that's a, a straight twelve point deduction there. So uh, 
yeah, I'm four positions out there, so another zero for me. Next up, we've got Charlton. I thought Charlton would escape relegation this season by having, you know, a fairly decent one, but they ended up going down in 22nd position. So I was four positions out for uh, Charlton Athletic there, so they're back down into Division One. And finally, Hull. Now Hull disaster after the uh, the Christmas period and the lockdown period. I think they only won one, maybe I think it was two uh, games since yeah, January the first, which absolutely terrible losing 8-0 to a fellow relegation side yeah, as well absurd absolutely terrible and their, their form has been terrible looks like their players have um, just given up there but uh, the owners as well what's Pathetic. going on at, at Hull but uh, yeah I was 7 position 7 positions out for, for Hull there and 0 points again so still currently on 4 points um, so in 21st and 22nd position I had um, Birmingham then Barnsley the wrong way around uh, so for that I get uh, 6 points for the both of them uh, Birmingham knew they were going to have another disaster of a season uh, I believe sacking Gary Monk not bringing anyone in just recipe for disaster there lucky they only just stayed up really uh, and then Barnsley bit of a yo-yo club but I thought they'd finally uh, stay up and they did finish in 21st on the incredible final day of course uh, then I had Hull 5 out there um, didn't ex I knew they were going to have a bad year but I didn't think they finished bottom um, Jar the likes of Jarrell Bowen um, and co I thought they'd just managed to stay up as long as they kept and I thought they would till the end of the season but they didn't they lost quite a few major plays in January so uh, that's where it all fell apart there if they would have kept I think they would have finished 19th um, then I had disaster 10 out in Millwall had a poor start to the season under Neil Harris did end up resigning bringing in quality manager in Gary Rowett able to do really well with them putting him at a weak position 10 out there then had Charlton in 17th had a good squad thought they'd be able to do something in the championship uh, but with just injuries and injuries this way and not signing well not signing anyone in January really good job they got the takeover though but it was just an unlucky season that uh, for Lee Boyer and Charlton so no points there for 17th now we're going to move on uh, to 16th to 12th in 16th I had Luton Town thought they'd have a good year didn't end up doing well at the start of the season sort of teetering around the relegation spots Bought back Nathan Jones. What an appoint reappointment that is for them. The guy who got on uh, straight back into the championship. Uh, he turned things around and kept him up on the last day of the season, letting him finish 19th. So no points again there. Then I went for the Jack Swansea City. Nine out there. Um, Steve Cooper never had a managerial job for, for, before in professional football. No, I think he wasn't he some sort of. I think he was a youth team coach or something. Yeah, he was, or something like that. He was a youth team coach before that and managed the young England under 18s oh, who yes. won the. Uh, World Cup so first job in professional football uh, especially with some of the plays they'd lost and not signed I didn't think they'd do well but they had a bumper tr January transfer window bringing in Brewster on loan um, sort of doing well ended up finishing the playoffs which in my eyes is a complete miracle especially on the last day as well we'll get to that later um, then I had Sheffield Wednesday finishing 14th two out there actually finished in 16th uh, thought they'd have an average season, not bringing in much quality there. Just I thought they'd continue on from the season prior. Gary Monk coming in, uh, and just no change really. Uh, just an average mid-table finish for Sheffield Wednesday. Then I said Blackburn in 13th, they actually finished 11th. Thought they'd have a really good season uh, once again from the season prior, uh, building on Bills on moving up the table from what they did before. They did so. Tony Mowbray doing a superb job there once again. Bradley Dack got injured uh, halfway through the season, so could have finished much higher. But 11th is a respectable, uh, respectable position for them. Then had Forest five out. What happened on the last day? Could have easily got playoffs. Could have easily finished sixth. Uh, complete bottlers how do you lose to Barnsley on the last day of the season 4-1 absolutely incredible quite frankly um, Sabri Lamucci thought he'd do well for them uh, bringing, in some great, bringing in some great names as well spending a lot of money in the summer but just couldn't do anything with it so 7th position for them <laughs> and then out of that lot two points not good no <laughs> well again 
for my 16th to 12th position, we'll, we start off with Birmingham. I thought they'd finish in 16th position. They actually finished down in 20th. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not sure. Birmingham teetering on the edge of relegation could have quite easily gone down this season as well. Get Bellingham, of course. <laughs> 20, going, going over to um, Borussia Dortmund for, was it 20? Oh, I think it could rise to 30 million. But I mean, the, the, the that, number but 22 shirt as serious. well, which is uh, ridiculous. Only well, not I in know, America. <laughs> well, yeah. well, not only that, they retire actual legend shirts, not a player that's like kicked a ball for them, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, it's just, just crazy. Not sure what Birmingham are doing there, but uh, yeah, I was five positions out on that one, zero points. Next, I have Preston North End. I thought they, you know, the last few years they have been knocking on the door of those promotion places or playoff paid places. Um, didn't think they, you know, recruited too well last summer. But I was six positions out there. They actually finished in ninth. Mm -hmm. Next, I had the Jacks. They actually spawned it all the way to the playoffs. Um, really lucky that they uh, picked up Brewster. Maybe that was good management. I'm, I'm not sure. Sure, that's and, just Steve Cooper. Yeah, you, but isn't it? I think Brewster. He must have played in those youth teams for for England or something for for them to get him. Yeah, Sheffield Wednesday. I thought they'd do a, a little bit better than they did. Um, I had them down in 13th position. He actually came 16th. So. Um, yeah, I think it was Kadeem Harris they brought in on the Quality on the left left is. wing. Just blows hot and cold some weeks he'll be great, other weeks he, he won't and um, you've Jacob got Murphy, Murphy, yeah, as well. Murphy as well. Hot and cold again, so um Unlucky Wednesday, really a mid table at the moment. It's probably end up there next season as well. In and in 12th position, I actually went for Blackburn Rovers. I was just one out with this, so I do get two points for this one. They actually ended up in 11th position. A good season for Blackburn Rovers, really. Uh, unlucky, maybe a, a few more points, and they could have you know snuck into the playoffs. But uh, there's some really good teams in and around those playoff uh, places at the moment. So, uh, yeah, Blackburn Rovers. Two points or two, one position out, two points for me there. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the next set of teams. And this takes us from 11th position up to 7th position, just below the playoffs. I had Middlesbrough. <laughs> Middlesbrough. Oh, where do we with, start? Um, Woodgate, uh, yeah, totally... I don't think he... He didn't have the rub the green, but uh, maybe it was out of his depth slightly as well. Couldn't set up his teams. Well, if they've got a really good squad there at Middlesbrough, but uh, Warnock came in. He Warnock leaving Cardiff, of course, by mutual agreement, or he, he left rather. And then Middlesbrough asked him to go up uh, to the northeast, took the job, and maybe save them from relegation in the Just end because they uh, they were, looked well dodgy. But uh, yeah. yeah, I had them finishing in 11th position and it was six positions out there for Middlesbrough. Next I had Forrest. Uh, Lamucci couldn't keep them in that uh, sixth or fifth position at the end of the Disaster season. Of the last Four game. one on the end. <laughs> that is all they needed to do. If when, once they had gone down to was it two one, just shut up shot and they were they were still safe. I think to uh, you know still remain in the playoffs, but they didn't. They they uh, shot themselves in the foot and uh, yeah, I had them in tenth position. They ended up in seventh, so three positions out for me there. Total disaster for myself. And Huddersfield coming down from the Premier League last season, fought with their squad. They would have been strong enough, although it's notoriously difficult when you do come yeah. down from the Premier League to bounce back um, at the first attempt. It might be that Fulham could do this this season, or maybe Cardiff. It remains to be seen. But yeah, Huddersfield, I was nine positions out there. Obviously, they finished in 18th position. And Derby, Derby, over the past few seasons, they've either been in the playoffs or just outside the playoffs. Um, I was two positions out in this one. I had them down as eighth, and they actually finished in tenth. So I get I actually get a point there. And finally, Stoke City. Um, I had them in, I think, yeah, I had them in seventh position, eight positions out for this. They they started the season terribly, didn't they? Yeah, Nathan um, Jones doing an awful job eight, there. Yeah, but then Jones going to Luton and saving Luton. Michael O'Neill coming in for Stoke, yeah. turning things right round. Turning round. it round, and I think they had, what was it, they had victories over uh, 
uh, Brentford at the tail end of the season. So they're going to. I think they're going to be a bit of a force to be reckoned with next season, especially if they have a good transfer window as yeah. well in the summer. And they've got a, a, a good nucleus of a very good team there as well. So I think they're going to do well in the uh, 2021 season. But uh, yeah, I was well out with Stoke City there. So for my 11th to 7th, I have Bristol City in 11th. Um, knew this was going to happen. Only one point position out there, so I get two points. You can't throw money at nothing, really. They just wanted to sign everyone in the summer, being linked to every single player linked to the who was going to go to the championship. Of course, the manager less at the moment as well, looking for a, yeah, a new coach slash manager there, uh, getting rid of the uh, the car salesman. Yeah, car salesman. I mean, had an average start to the season, then he just folded up like a packet of crisps in the end, and finally deserved for uh, to get sacked. Uh, I can't see Lee Johnson getting back into the championship for mm. a while. I mean, I mean, the owners have wanted them up for a few years, but he just hasn't been able to do it, has he? And he, he wasted a lot of money in the summer as well, bring, well bringing in some half-rate talent. Uh, I mean, Naki Wells, average signing. Well, well he's an Naki Wells, well, all right signing. That. Naki Wells, all right signing, but everywhere else just couldn't get him to gel. Not good enough for promotion, so... Uh, 11th for Bristol. In 10th position, I have Brentford, the biggest disaster... You have you just have all the sort of neutrals begging for Brentford to go up with their style of play, thinking that it's big and that it's good enough to go up automatically. They finished in the playoffs, thought they wouldn't do well. I mean, their biggest wasn't wasn't sure about Thomas Frank whether they could get him get him anywhere near the playoffs. Really unproven in the championship. Most most managers who have managed in the championship before tend to leave after a few months anyway. End up getting sacked because of poor starts. But miles out with Brentford. Pontus Janssen, I, I bet Irish guy's happy at the moment that they haven't gone up, so he doesn't have to get a tattoo of him. Um, but then I had one on the nose. I had Preston in ninth, so that's five points there. Um, good side, but under Alex Neal, I, I, every year I just know there isn't enough for him to go up. They've been knocking on the off playoffs for years, but they just need a little bit more quality just so they can push in there. So that's five points to me. Then we have Derby. Philip Koku, unproven in the championship, as usual, I didn't think he'd bring win into the championship straight away. But then after he's he won three, well, well, yeah, he yeah. and Wayne Rooney as well. And since Rooney came in, he sort of galvanised them, captain Derby as well, mm -hmm. and they, they shot up the table and looked like they were going to make the playoffs, but ultimately they didn't. They looked they, well, they run out of steam in the end. Run out of they, steam. So. Terrible starts of the season. What Rooney transfer was a bit dodgy, let's just say. Um, two out there, finished in tenth. Then. Another big mistake, just missing out on the playoffs, I had Huddersfield. Thought Jan Jan Sievert was a good manager at the start of the season. I had an alright squad, but then again, whenever a Premier League team finishes bottom, it never goes well. Just look at Sunderland a few years back. Um, Huddersfield basically doing the same, almost getting relegated. Sacking Jan Sievert, he couldn't do much. Bringing in Danny Cowley and his... And his brother as well. What a sign! What a sign in that is. It was for great. Manager. And then they were let go once it was Huddersfield knew that they were staying up. Then yeah. uh, stupid by, by Cowleys. Point. Stupid getting rid of Cowleys. They, they could have really built something and be in contention for next season. Um, getting rid of Mark Hudson. Mark Hudson as well. Stupid as well. I think they should have put him as care, well caretaker manager. Tried him out. Been there for a few years. Had the job in the Premier League. Even though. Show glimpses of quality, just couldn't do anything, so disaster from the Huddersfield board, 7th there. Moving on to the playoffs, I had Stoke in ninth. I mean, from the disaster season prior, I thought they, they had a good enough squad and good enough workings under a good manager, Nathan Jones, to get them into sixth, but Nathan Jones, a massive flop, couldn't get the team playing, didn't have the transfers there either. Uh, and the players just didn't, so, didn't show quality. Ryan Shawcross getting injured at the start of the season as well. So miles out on that one. Ninth, nine positions out. Then another disaster in fifth. I thought Middlesbrough. That's your biggest. Uh, that's my biggest yeah. one of the um, of my predictions. Thought Jonathan Woodgate would be able to get something good there. Um, had a good squad as well, but just couldn't manage them. I mean. Played some of the worst defensive football I've ever seen, really. Um, and that's saying something when you had Tony Pulis prior as well. But bringing in Warnock, said he didn't... Well, at Cardiff, when he first took over, he said he could trust many of the lads. But with Middlesbrough, he, could, he said he only could trust three. So 
don't think he's going to do as well as middle at Middlesbrough Warnock going to be interesting to see what happens next season Can, is, I he, can see, is he even going to be there we don't know is he even going to be there I can't see it but if he is I think he's going to go um, mm-hmm. soon I think he's going to go um, midway through the season Um, don't think they'll go up next season either. Need something to happen there, really. Need a clear out. Then fourth position, on the nose, Fulham. Um, what a prediction that is. Many people criticised me in the comments for saying that they go straight back up with the players they had. I didn't think so. All Premier, Every team coming down for the Prem usually struggles. I mean, it's only Newcastle and Burnley have gone straight back up, really. And they kept their managers, but... Fulham knew they'd have problems at the back, getting refereeing decisions for them, um, had a good squad there but struggled, well, not good enough in defence really, didn't have enough quality and losing to teams below them as well um, towards the end of the season, so knew they'd only make playoffs. Then in third position, I had West Brom. Only one out there. They went up automatically. I could have almost finished in third if Brentford would have gone up automatically. Um, had a really good squad. Brought in some good players. Uh, Charlie Austin was a good sign-in. Zahor was a bit of a flop from Cardiff. There's some very good players at um, West Brom. You've got the likes of Diagana, yeah. I think, on, on loan. And Pereira, who's a, 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 a great player. So uh, and, uh, and not only that, Semi Ajayi. Um, yeah, been ex- yeah. in- exceptional this season signing from Rotherham of course former uh, Cardiff Academy player so yeah played really well didn't think they'd have enough for the uh, enough for automatics but knew they'd be strong enough in the playoffs but I mean they went up automatically so out of the playoffs I had seven points out of a possible uh, 20 there not bad moving on to my playoff positions I've, in sixth position I went for Bristol City the Wurzels they of course ended up in 12th position so it was six places out there yeah, as we've already mentioned Lee Johnson getting the chop and um, yeah six positions out zero points for me there next up we have Brentford now Brentford finished in third that chaotic exhilarating last day of the season saw them just miss out on automatic promotion. Um, yeah, brilliant. Some brilliant players there. The likes of Berenana and um, Ollie Watkins scoring a uh, pack full of goals as well. To see them in the Premier League would be, uh, yeah, it'd be good to see. Uh, whether they make it or not, I don't know. Hopefully they won't. Hopefully at the expense of Cardiff that uh, um, they'll be in the... Uh, the championship next season so um, there was two positions out for Brentford so we'll get a point there next I had West Brom of course West Brom went up automatically in second position I had them finishing in fourth position so I'll get a point there for being two positions out and finally I went for Cardiff City um, I thought I actually predicted Cardiff to finish about fourth or fifth but looking back at the, the old video I had them predicted to finish third uh, they finished fifth position overall four not left Harris came in galvanised the troops, came back from the, the lockdown and um, yeah, they came out all guns blazing. Okay, they had a couple of defeats, but uh, had some really good victories as well, which pushed them up into the playoff positions. Uh, so yeah, two positions out there and one point. So moving on to the final mm-hmm. two positions, which is automatic promotion places in second place. I actually went for Leeds United. I just couldn't see them winning the league, but I think they won the, the league by something like 10 points in yeah, the end. So, the- um, they walked the league really Leeds yeah, this year I'd say so uh, yeah well done to Leeds and they finally getting back up to the Premier League after something like 16 seasons out and in first position I had Fulham as league winners I thought their Disaster. squad I thought their squad they kept hold of you know the likes of Mitrovic um Kearney is still there in the middle it? and they recruited well as well uh, finally finishing fourth position I had them in first so three positions uh to the to the negative for me yeah. on that one so I get zero points so overall I had a disaster this season on my predictions mm-hmm. for the whole of this league table I came away with a final score of 12 points uh, so in second like most people on YouTube and online I put Cardiff in second Warnock promotion specialist uh, many saying that Cardiff actually kept mo- the majority of the score from the Premier League but I really if you look at it we lost many of our key players well, that really helped us out two low knees really you had the likes of Camarasa Camarasa going back to Spain and the snake as well Well, actually he went to Crystal Palace and then over to Spain Uh, I think he plays for Deportivo now I think so and you've got the likes of Harry Arter as well getting sent 
went off it against us in that Fulham draw. Yeah, turning into Tom Daly, ridiculous. Yeah, and um, then never coming back. Of course, also go into Fulham was uh, Bobby Decker over Reed. Yeah, I, I, well, we saw that, and in a way, I was happy with it. Uh, we just really well. He had some good moments for us last season, but just didn't fit in in the end. Also, lost a really good player in, in Bruno Equal Manga at the mm -hmm. back as well, which really suffered. Um, Aidan Flint, massive flop at the back as well. Um, Warnock left after losing two derbies uh, by mutual consent, bringing in Harris. Many fans weren't happy about it. Slow start to Harris's reign, but Harris' ball is beautiful. Bringing in two good loanies as well. Albert Adoma, Forrest, don't bring him back. Karma. <laughs> Instant karma. You look who finished above you at the end of the day, um, and Sanderson as well. Really good young right back from Wolves as well, and uh, phenomenal. And I'd say that was a good season for Cardiff, finishing the playoffs. Uh, then top on the nose, I predicted the champion. Uh, new leads would go up, um, especially after last year. Bielsa would just have him right there. Um, no bottle in it this year. Strong enough squad knew they'd probably end up walking the league, and I got it right. So, out of those two, I had uh, five points out of a possible ten, so not bad. So that means for the season, I this year I had 32 points. Fantastic predict, fantastic predictions, especially for the championship, which is always difficult. And you only had 12 points. Yeah, terrible. terrible. I'm, yeah, I hang my head in shame. I'm gonna have to do a lot more research next season uh, for the 2020-2021 campaign before I do my <laughs> predictions. But yeah, a disaster for me but absolutely fabulous from yourself Nathan yeah, uh, you yeah, finished 20 points uh, above me so congratulations with that Nathan before we leave the viewers and this video is there anything you'd like to add um, yep yeah, live stream Cardiff v Fulham uh, playoff, final, playoff semi-final of course watch along you know you know the drill sub to my channel link in description if you want to watch that and then if Cardiff gets the playoff final massive one another live stream there so once again guys thanks as always for watching thanks for commenting and uh, making your predictions as well and we'll see you again in the next video cheers guys oh, how did you do so bad this season